I draw a lot of couples when I'm drawing caricatures at parties and in this video I'm going to be showing you some of the secret things that I am thinking about in order to do a good couples drawing. I'll use this photo of a couple that I drew at a party recently. The first thing I look for is the shapes of their faces and the difference between the shapes of their faces. The more I notice the difference in their head shapes, the easier it will become to draw. I like putting whoever has the longest hair on the right side of the drawing and it usually ends up overlapping a little bit. So let's draw her eyes. got eyelashes but they are close to her eyelids so I don't want to emphasize them too much. Eyelid. I'm looking at this shape. The sh I consider that like an almond shape. And she has dark eyes. So the way to cheat that is I'm going to draw a large pupil, put a highlight in the middle of it, color it in, then add shadow from the eyelid. Now the eyebrow. And this is the shape I see. It's sort of like a hook shape. It's kind of straight, but if you look at his eyebrows in the photo, his eyebrows are like this, like my fingers, they, they seem to come down a little bit, whereas hers are straight and maybe up a tiny bit on the edges. So that's a difference that I can exploit. Or emphasize. I'm also always looking for this empty space here, the space underneath the eyebrow. I consider this a space that has to, if you get that exact, it's going to really help the likeness. The eyes are really, they are called the window to the soul, and if you get the eyes right, <coughs> then everything is going to fall in place and it's going to be a, a good drawing especially for a five-minute sketch. Now this is her right eye, and it's definitely something I need to work on. Getting the shape right. You see, this shape of this right eye is not exactly like the photo, but it's close enough so that no one will be able to tell. But I definitely need to practice that. Okay, we got the other eye in. <coughs> Another difference that you'll notice is her nose is kind of turned down and what I mean by that is you can't see her nostrils but if you look at the photo of his you can see his nostrils and so that's another difference that you can point out you can make sure her nose is even more turned down and his nose is even more turned up I know my style is not super exaggerated but knowing what I could exaggerate actually helps get a likeness. Now we're going to do the smile. Both of them have big smiles with awesome teeth. I can exaggerate that a little bit. This whole time I'm looking at the shape of things and trying to match it. 
right in this corner here, there's a little shadow where you can see back into the mouth. Now here's one way to do teeth, is just draw the gums and then finish the line here. I'm not even drawing the bottom teeth, I'm just drawing the top teeth as if they're really long. I'm drawing this little spike, which is the gums. And the reason why I leave that spot empty is cut sort of like, I think it's called a discovered line or a disappearing line. <clears throat> it makes the teeth look tight together. If you draw the line thick and all the way down, it's gonna make it look like she has gaps between her teeth. Now she has this cheek smile line. Now sometimes I just leave this out. You can draw this if you want, but Sometimes with some, someone that looks young, just leave out as many wrinkles as you can. You don't have to add every wrinkle that you see. I'm switching to my big marker. She has sort of a pointy chin, so I do that. And drawing the chin first anchors me. Because sometimes if I start here and I draw my way down, I can accidentally draw the, tent of the chin too long. <clears throat> it's very important for the likeness, I think. So I draw that first and it anchors the whole thing and it gives me a target to shoot for. Now I'm thinking the brow is here. That's usually the next line I draw. And then I'm looking at the cheek. And what I'm trying to see is there's these two corners. Which one sticks out more? And hers, I think this one is above this one. You see what I mean? And another thing, when I'm draw, I'm trying to use my arm, even though this is a small movement. If I'm doing a big line, I'm trying to use my arm and not my wrist. The small lines, I'll use my wrist. But the big lines, especially the hair, you'll see I'm pulling my whole arm down, and it makes for a a smoother, more confident looking line. Now here's another part that I mess up all the time is this part of the jaw. Well, let's see if we can get it right this time. So I'm gonna boom, and then turn the corner up. Well, I kind of messed up, but it's not too bad. Now this part of her forehead is much smaller than the shape of his forehead, much more narrow. Her ear sort of has three sections to it. Top, middle, bottom, and her earrings. Now I have to be careful not to smear this line because in the sketch pad it can smear. <clears throat> All right. Now I'm looking at the flow of her hair. Down to this point, I'm going to try to get it with one line. And then finish. if this actually looks like her but it's a practice drawing I'm just drawing a few lines in here to show the flow of hair
<clears throat> All right, it's not perfect, but it's not horrible either, especially for a practice drawing. Okay, now we're going to start on him. He's a little taller, so his eyes are going to be up here. And slightly behind her, her hair is going to be cutting off part of his jawline. He has the same shaped eyes, but they're smaller. These eyes are blue. I'll make them a little lighter by leaving the highlight out, drawing the pupil a little smaller. Then if you look at his eyebrows, they curve down a little bit <coughs> toward the outside. Starting the bridge of the nose so that I don't get lost. That line here anchors me again to make sure that I don't draw this eye too far out or too far in. And then this eye is pretty easy. It just sort of matches the other eye. He's kind of looking at the camera straight on so that the shape of these two eyes are almost exact. Just to show you again, I can look at the photo and I'm looking at this shape, this shape underneath his eyelid. If you get that right, the eyebrow is going to scroll perfectly right on top of that. Now the nose. His nose is kind of narrow. Whereas hers is kind of wide and going down, his is narrow and turned up. I don't know what that's called, but I'm looking at this little the bridge at the bottom down by the nostrils. There's a nostril. The other nostril. This is what I call a dimension line. It just shows where the top of the nose stops and it, it bends down toward the bottom. <clears throat> we can add another dimension line here. Now for the smile. Smile's a little more crooked. And I'm exaggerating it a little bit. Now there's there's shadow on either side. So we can add that. We're doing the same thing with teeth. I'm not even drawing the bottom teeth. I, I, I do it several different ways, but in this way, I'm, I'm not even drawing the bottom teeth. I'm just drawing their top teeth and making them look long and crazy. Now we've got the cheek fold there. Mustache is kind of light, so I'm going to go ahead and just draw the hairs. They're curving to the right here, and then as it makes the corner, they curve back to the left and curve down. And I'm going to get those started there. 
<clears throat> Switch to my big marker. Now I could go a little stylish on the beard, so instead of just drawing a round chin, I'm gonna make some jagged lines like there's hair down there. There's always different ways to do it. You don't have to do it the exact same way every time. Now I'm looking at this line, I can see it. It's in here by the brow, and it comes back out and down. This whole area here sort of is shaped like a shovel. I'm gonna make a confident shovel type line. The forehead is wide, and then you got some cool curves. Which sometimes I mess up live, uh, but it's fun to draw curls because you can add variety and there's tricks. You see how I'm just doing a couple of lines, bending it this way and sort of changing direction with a couple more lines to make it look like a curly pattern. <coughs> now his ears. First of all, the side of his hair comes out here starts its way up and then the ears fit in this area. Straight up and then we're going to add some curls. And when you're adding curls, I had a teacher tell me, don't just make every See, I'm making curved lines to show the curls, but don't make every one the exact same size. Go big, small, big, small. So that's sort of a big one, do a small one. A big one, small one. Add some variety, there's some hairs popping out wild there. A big one, a small one. More popped out wild hairs. I'm gonna draw the neck. Then when I'm live, I do a real fast collar, which is just a V and then boom. Now I'm gonna fill in the beard with the small side of the marker. I can finish this line here, add some more hairs. It doesn't have to be perfect because I'm trying to draw like a stylized cartoon drawing. So every hair doesn't have to be in there. Now this is another part that I mess up. Let's add some more hairs up here to fill this in. That was not too bad. You don't want to get messy like I did down here where everything is not lined up perfectly. That's considered messy. I really like stuff being super clean looking. And so that is it. There's something that I've been thinking about doing and I want to find out how many of you are interested in it. I've been thinking about putting together a book where some of these lessons are organized into chapters or maybe a video course. So if you're interested in something like that, please leave a vote or a note in the comments about it. And I'm just trying to gauge how many people would be interested. But thank you very much. I'll see you in the next video and have a great day.